So I hope you had a great long Easter weekend with your family and friends and now today I'm here to talk about the books I read during March. I have to say that March was a pretty good month. I stayed consistent with my videos, which is pretty difficult for me to do sometimes. So for me to put out one video a week, I was pretty proud of myself, and I am proud of myself, so I hope you guys like the videos I posted this past month. So on top of that and schoolwork, it was kind of hard to do a lot of reading, but I did manage to finish three books that were all really, really good. Some were okay, but altogether they were really solid and great books. So it turned out that during March, I only read sequels and installments, so it's going to be a little difficult for me to talk about my specific thoughts on the book without giving anything away, but I'm going to do my best to recap my feelings and thoughts and opinions on the book while still giving you a general um, overview of what the series is about so you guys can see if you're interested in the series and want to pick it up for yourself. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let me know if you've read any of these books and or the first bit of the series. And without further ado, I'm going to get started and show you the books I read during March. So the first book that I read in March was The Indigo Spell by Rochelle Mead, and this is the third book in the Bloodline series, which is the continuation after the Vampire Academy series. With that being said, I can't really talk about a lot about the series because the events that take place in this book carry out from the Vampire Academy series. So if you have not read that one, please check it out. It's an amazing series that puts a great twist on vampires and includes a love triangle that is unlike any other. The characters, the writing, the romance will have you in awe of this whole series and if you don't like the first book in the Vampire Academy series, don't give up because they only get better by each book. The last three books are some of the best installments in a series that I've ever read. Most of you guys probably know how much I love the Vampire Academy series and how much I love the main character who is Rose Hathaway. She's incredibly strong, so independent, and there's a quality to her that is unlike anything I've seen in another character. She comes to life with every single book and I literally feel like I've grown to know her. And even though she's not in this series, I still feel like I'm attached to her in her world because the same events that kind of continued out into this one still makes you feel like you're in the same world yet you're not reading about the character but you're close to them enough that you still feel connected to them. I don't know if that made any sense, kind of sounded okay in my mind but I think you guys know what I mean. So yes, this book was a very solid installment in the series. I really did like it. The romance was great, the plot development was great, and just overall, all the elements that came together were fantastic and kept me on the edge of my seat the entire time. But I do have to say that I felt like some moments in regards to the romance were a little cheesy, and I wish they were more natural, but other than that, I gave this a 5 out of 5. Um, it was fantastic, everything I hoped for, and it just made me love this series even more, and I can't wait for the next book. Alright guys, so the second book I read in March was Rebel Heart by Maura Young, and this is the sequel to Blood Red Road, which is the first installment in the Dustland series, and it was fantastic, it was an amazing start to the series, and it made me so excited to pick up this sequel. Basically, the series follows a girl named Saba who lives in an alternate and dystopian world where everything has changed. There is no longer grass, there is no longer beautiful flowers, basically everything has been covered by sand. The world she lives in is hot, it's a very brutal environment where every day there's another sandstorm that tears this world apart even more. One thing leads to another and Saba's brother Lou is kidnapped by men on horses so it's up to her to embark on a journey in order to save him that allows her to learn more about herself than she could ever imagine. The thing with this series that you have to get used to is that there is no, there's no quotation marks, it's all written without them so the dialogue is meshed together with descriptions and that sort of idea so it is a little hard to kind of wrap your head around in the beginning but once you get past that and you get involved in the world and you meet the characters it becomes an experience that is unlike any other in YA and in a book in general. Maura Young does a fantastic job of making you feel like you're a part of the world and you've met the characters and you've grown to love them throughout this whole journey. The writing, the characters, the way they talk is all something I've never really experienced before and for that reason it's one of my favorite series by far, like ever. So this sequel I found was really good. The beginning part was my favorite and the build up to the climax was absolutely action packed and so thrilling but I feel like the last half of the novel really let me down and it took a turn that I wasn't really expecting and for that reason I was caught off guard and not really liking the way it was turning out. 
For the first half, I felt like I had never left off. I just got the book. Things were picking up. It's like I never stopped reading about the world. I was so excited to read about Saba and all the other characters to see what had happened since the first book. And then I was kind of let down by Saba and what she was doing in the second half of the book. And I felt like I've never been farther away from the main character ever in my whole reading experience. Basically, I felt let down by her actions and what she was doing. So for that reason, the ending made me feel really distant from her and it just got to the point where I felt distant from a lot of the characters and I was kind of disappointed with where things were heading and the way it ended didn't really make me feel excited for the next book. I was just kind of disappointed in how everything played out and the way Maura Young ended it. Don't get me wrong, I'm still excited to read the third and final book, I believe, in this series. It's still a really good sequel. I would totally recommend it. I mean, it's an amazing series, so you guys have to check it out if you read the first book. So for that reason, I give it close to a 4.5 out of 5 around there, so it's not a huge deal. I just feel like some things could have been changed to really just make it an overall amazing book. It still was really good, so I totally would recommend it if you've read the first book. Just in my opinion, some things could have been different for it to be even better. So the third and final book I read in March was The Essence by Kimberly Durding, and this is the sequel to The Pledge, which was an amazing first installment in this great series. This series follows a girl named Charlania who lives in Ludania, which is a country that is set on a ranking system based on the language you speak. So basically, the wealthier you are and the more privileged you are, the higher, you, the higher up you are, and that basically allows you to speak your own language, so only the people in your system and your level are allowed to understand you. And it's so strict that if you are in a lower level and you look someone in the eye who is above you while they're speaking their language, it could lead to your execution. Charlania, also known as Charlie, has a very deep secret, which is that she can understand every single language, and she has been keeping this a secret ever since she has known she could understand these languages, because if it were to get out, and if people were to know, it would lead to her death. So basically, we follow her in her journey to understand this, and why she can understand these languages, and what that means for her and her safety, and it was a very, very good book. The first installment was amazing. I fell in love with it and for that reason it was one of the best books I read last year. So when I saw this in the bookstore I was so excited. I picked it up, I brought it home and I started reading it and to be honest it wasn't what I expected it to be. As good as it was and as much as I liked the character development and how it recapped what happened in the first book I was kind of let down and I just felt the whole pacing of the novel was a little off. It got me really excited in the beginning and things were building up but I never felt like it revealed the things it was leading to, and for that reason, it was just kind of a letdown in the end. A lot of things happened, but I felt like in the end, not a lot actually did happen. There were some things that just occurred, and there's some changes and some plot twists, but there's nothing revealed or nothing that really changed. We saw Charlie in a new perspective doing something different, and it allowed her to kind of mature as a character, but it wasn't enough to the point where I felt like this was a really satisfying sequel. Sometimes I feel like this happens in a sequel where it's just a book that has no purpose in a way. It doesn't really have anything exciting in it and it just kind of allows to, the series to continue and lead you to the third book. It was a pretty short book but it took me a while to read because I wasn't really into it. I kind of had to push myself at times to kind of get through it to get to the good parts but when the good parts did come I was like, well that wasn't really worth it. But overall, I thought it was a satisfying read. It gave me a little bit of what I wanted. I got to see the main character in a new light. There is some development in the romance and other things like that, in the relationships, and we do find out a little bit, but not what I was hoping for. Overall, I gave this book a four to five. I could give it a little bit lower, but for how much I love the first book and this series as a whole, it's very difficult for me to give it anything lower than that. It was solid and satisfying, but just not as amazing as the first book was. The first book was phenomenal. If you've read this series or the sequel, definitely let me know what you, th what you thought of it. I love to hear your thoughts and opinions, but remember, keep the comments spoiler free because there's some people who haven't read the first book at all and have no idea what happens in this book. So, very vague I guess, but that's what I thought of this book and yeah. Alright guys, so that was my video. I really hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books or any of the books in this series. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on them. Also, let me know what books you read in March. I'd love to hear 
how many more books you read than me because I just am just so slow and I wish I read more this month but I'm sure you guys did way better than me so let me know what you read this month. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!